journalist access to Libya is severely restricted at the moment. She's reporting from neighboring Egypt in Cairo. Fanula? We are getting a sporadic but consistent picture of demonstrations again today in Libya, Aisha. Uh, last night, those clashes you referred to in al Baida, unconfirmed reports that 70 people were injured with live fire, sniper fire. Indeed, the director of a hospital in al Baida uh, allegedly saying that he has run out of medication to treat these people. We're hearing of people being detained, preemptive arrests before any demonstrations, and also more clashes and demonstrations today. Demonstrations in Tripoli, we heard, were being broken up and dispersed by the military. We're also hearing uh, of more demonstrations in El Benghazi, which we had known uh, began these clashes two days ago. Those clashes began because of the arrest of a human rights lawyer. But we should stress that SMS, texting, uh, phone lines, internet are all sporadic, if not down completely. And it is very difficult to get a complete picture of what is happening. But needless to say that the picture we are getting is that arrests are continuing and the clashes and demonstrations also. Uh, Fanula, let me also ask you about Egypt, where you are. Uh, it's been, tomorrow will make it a week since uh, Hosni Mubarak stepped down. What are we hearing in the way of any kind of demonstrations, any kind of protests? Well, we are hearing of uh, demonstrations today outside, for example, the Algerian embassy in support of the Algerian people. Tomorrow it's expected there will be a huge demonstration of thanks uh, for what took place here a week ago. Uh, the numbers are expected to be fairly large. Uh, we also know that this is happening against the backdrop of a real slowing of the Egyptian economy, and this has the interim government extremely concerned. The figures are varying uh, just as to how much money the economy of Egypt is losing, but it's expected to be in the hundreds of millions. So the question now, after these demonstrations on Friday, is how will the military government react to the continuing protests and demonstrations, not only in the state sector, but also in the private sector, where people now have extremely high expectations following their victory last week in the ouster of President uh, Hosni Mubarak. Years after he came to power, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi has rarely looked so secure. Surrounded by leaders and officials from the African Union's 53 members gathering in Tripoli for a special summit, and buoyed by the return to Libya of convicted Lockerbie bomber Abdul Basid al Megrahi, a far remove from the fallout raining down on British politicians. Not only is Gaddafi playing host to dozens of African leaders, Preparations are well advanced for the Grand Parade Tuesday, commemorating the day he overthrew the Libyan king. No one is publicly asking what it cost Libya to get Megrahi home. Colonel Gaddafi has been in power longer than any other world leader, has made plenty of enemies in that time, but after 40 years appears to be giving the impression he's putting his past behind him. Libya compensated the families of the Lockerbie victims with a $1.5 billion fund. And in the last decade, Gaddafi has given up his nuclear ambitions, dismantled his chemical weapons program, and rebuilt his relationship with the US and Europe, raising the question, is the Libyan leader, long the bogeyman of the West, a reformed character? One man who feels a judge of that is Shakir Mohamed Dahil, his family fled Gaddafi's coup for the U.S., leaving behind $900 million worth of business and property. 35 years later, he came back. It's uh, the best decision I made in my life. He married and set up an English school and is sure Libya is changing, despite many outstanding problems, for the better. The country, first of all, is opening to the West. And it has no choice. If you're going to isolate yourself, it's, it's a dead end. You have to open. He sees the outrage over Megrahi's release as a passing problem. The cost for Libya, as Colonel Gaddafi is finding out, a few empty seats at his parade. Western leaders who've decided not to show up. Nick Robertson, CNN, Tripoli, Libya.